What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. Before we get started, I have to say this. Dark Souls 2 holds a very, very special place in my heart. So this video may sound a bit nerdy to some people, but there's no other game to me that's quite like this one. Dark Souls 2 is a very special game. At first, I didn't like it as much as Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 3, but as time has gone on, Dark Souls 2 has become my most loved game of all time. Dark Souls 3 has faded away into a distant memory and I haven't thought about playing it again in a long time. On the other hand, Dark Souls 1 is an amazing game, but I haven't thought much of it either. But it started the Dark Souls series, so for that, I can't help but thank it, because it gave me a game I'll never forget. And I find myself coming back to Dark Souls 2 time and time again. My Dark Souls journey started a long time ago in the glory days of Dark Souls 1, and I played all three of the Dark Souls games over and over again. I guess you could say I'm a bit of a Dark Souls veteran. When Dark Souls 2 released, I spent most of my time playing it. I beat it on multiple characters and new game pluses and played hours and hours of PvP, formulating different builds and the infinite number of ways to have fun in a Souls game. And it was the first time I saw the Dark Souls community really grow into something great. But Dark Souls 2 was something more than a game. It was its own world, with so many different characters all trying to find their way in this confusing place they called Drang Lake. You could really see how the curse affected them on an emotional level. Everything was normal for every one of them until the end that curse changed the world around them and themselves. Each character has a compelling story, and I found myself interested in every single one of them. Watching their stories unfold is sometimes hard, but you can't help but feel bad for some of them. Because after all, most stories in Dark Souls don't have a happy ending. Take poor Lucatil, for example. You know how her story ends. But there's something even more special about the stories of Dark Souls. There's almost always a deeper meaning and trying to figure them out is always interesting. Dark Souls has a way of storytelling like no other. It gives you clues and the rest is for you to figure out, and that's something I'll always love about it. One thing I have to mention about Dark Souls 2 is Majula. It's a peaceful, quiet haven surrounded by chaos in every direction, like a small beacon of life and hope. That's what makes it so special. In a world full of undead and turmoil, you can always come back and have some sense of peace. The music you'll hear when you get there is peaceful, but somehow ominous at the same time. That's actually what's been playing in the background of this video. On one side of Majula, you have the peaceful ocean waves and a sunset, and on the other you can see all the dangerous places you'll soon find yourself in, off in the distance. It's so perfectly designed, and I find myself sitting in Majula just listening to the music sometimes because of how peaceful it is. Of course, Firelink Shrine is great too, but there's something about Majula that makes it so much more memorable, and so perfectly out of place in a world it doesn't belong in. Now that I've talked about Majula, I'm going to talk about the world design in general. The art style of Dark Souls 2 is perfect to me. Every single environment is so memorable, and I loved every single one of them. From the depths of the Black Gulch to the heights of Dragonary, they all had their own little twists and turns, and they were all unique from each other in their own way. Also, the level design wasn't linear, and always had you wondering what was waiting for you at the end of each path. And when it comes to weapons and armor, Dark Souls 2 has the best. It really feels like the FromSoft team let their imaginations run wild with this. There's some really amazing looking armors in this game, along with some of the coolest weapons I've ever used. It gives you so many options for builds. This was the only Souls game with Twin Blades, and I loved them. They were something different and something special. This was also the only Souls game with power stancing. You could dual wield almost any two weapons, and that opened the door for even more creative builds. That's what's so great about Dark Souls 2. Outside of the Katana meta, there were so many unique builds. I've had so many fun memories in PvP, seeing all the different ways someone could utilize a combination of weapons. On top of all these great things, there were the DLCs, which I think we can all agree were some of the best DLCs ever made. Each DLC had whole new environments to explore. New weapons, new armor, new bosses, and everything in between. And there were three of them. I'll never forget descending down to the Queen and the Sunken King, or going up and down the Broom Tower to fight Raim, and fighting through the Snowstorm and Elium Lois to get to the Ivory King. It was truthfully the cherry on top of an already amazing game. Every moment spent in Dark Souls 2 was one to remember, and that's not something I can say about any other game. The only thing I could ever say is wrong with this game would be the matchmaking system and soul memory being a thing. But don't take it from me. If you haven't experienced Dark Souls 2 or never really got into the deeper side of it, I couldn't recommend it more. Dark Souls 2 will always hold a very, very special place in my heart that no other game can touch. Thank you, Dark Souls 2, for all the amazing memories you gave me. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe and put down in the comments what your favorite part of Dark Souls 2 was and I'll see you guys in the next one later.